everybody welcome back to the channel in today's video i'm going to be sharing with all of you the top three stocks that all of y'all should be keeping in your watch list for this week i'm also going to be doing an update on some of the stocks that i've mentioned in the previous videos all right y'all now before we begin again do not forget to annihilate the like button on your way in and also don't forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel right so let's let's get right into it right off the bat um so far things have been wonderful things have been going really really well um throughout the past week i haven't i haven't missed um the market has been doing exactly what i told y'all slowly fading all the way down I told y'all on Thursday night that the market, the SPY was going to go all the way down to $365. I was, I was off by, by I think $1. Yeah. So it dropped all the way down and this is the SPY futures. This one dropped all the way down to 366. If you look at the SPY itself, like if you type SPY, you will see that that one is down to like 363, right? There is like a little bit of a difference in between the two prices. The average of those two is 365. Now, is this the bottom? Is this the part where we see some type of bounce? Right now, the way things are looking, if you look on the left side where the futures are, like we're down, the, the, the SPY is down by negative 0.57% and the NASDAQ is down by negative 0.54%. Um, things could, things could really change overnight. It is down right now. All right. But, but things could change rapidly. And the reason why I say that, all right, I'm going to be sharing with y'all the VIX. Let's look at the VIX. Okay. Now with the VIX. I gave y'all a warning. If the SPY drops to $365, the VIX should go all the way up to $32. And it got in that green circle. And as soon as it did, buyers started to creep into the SPY, causing this sell-off on the VIX right here, going into the close. I think, I think that um, if we open negative, right, if we, if, if the SPY opens up negative, the VIX is going to be slightly above 30, all right? And then there might be some buyers stepping in at the open. The market can be, the market can be generous to shorts. And I believe that if we do open negative, then that could be the second chance that the market could be providing to greedy short sellers right before we see some type of dead cap bounce and if a dead cap bounce happens then the vix should drop from 30 all the way back down to 38 and then later on this week we will address the situation with the overall market but as for tomorrow that's that's what i'm expecting especially with how things are opening up now the first stock that all of y'all should be keeping in your watch list. That stock is, that stock is Ford. All right. Now, for those of y'all, again, who watched the previous videos, I told y'all the reason why the sell-off with Ford happens, right? The sell-off happened because of this descending triangle on the charts played out to perfection. And right now, with the way everything is looking, if you look at the daily, there is that Dragonfly Doji at the bottom, right? At $12. And $12 is the previous level of support right over here, all right? Now, again, things could open up lower. So don't be surprised if Ford opens up at around like $12.15 before we see some type of push like this, all right? And then it may be even continue on Tuesday as well. So just be on the lookout for something like that, especially if we open up red tomorrow. Okay. So how high can this one go? I think, I think it can climb all the way back up to 1350. 
within the next few days. Um, it would be sweet, especially for like day trading and opportunity. It would be sweet if it showed something intraday, which could push the stock all the way up to that price all in one day before continuing down lower later on. All right. So just be on the lookout for that one. That's the first stock. The second stock that y'all should be keeping in your washers. This one is, this one looks like another dip buying opportunity. And this one is BSX, Boston Scientific Corporation. And again, as you can see, there is the downtrend right here. It's been collapsing for the past two weeks. The volume, solid volume, solid green um, volume, right? A lot of buyers on that candle. Again, this is a Dragonfly Doji right here. All right. Now, this one right here at this level, I wouldn't want to keep shorting. If you look on the left side, there is that giant gap that just got filled. Well, yeah, it actually just, it got filled. It got filled on Friday and buyers stepped in heavy again. So watch this one for a bounce. It might not be the the cleanest or the most attractive bounce where it goes, where it opens up higher at around like 39.20. And then we see a massive push right there. It might look like what I just drew for y'all on Ford. All right, but be on the lookout for those. There is a lot of room up here, especially after that gap fill. And somebody could argue, somebody could argue that, you know, what if we don't drop, right? There is another gap on here to be worried about. And yes, there is. If you look at here, at the bottom, there's another one at $36, right? Eventually, that one is going to get filled. But for this video, we are talking about tomorrow, right? So you're talking about tomorrow. I do not expect a violent sell-off all the way down to $36 for this one tomorrow. I don't see that, especially after the massive move that occurred last week. And usually after massive moves, the market needs to chill out for a few days, right? And then decides whether it wants to continue lower or not, right? It either goes sideways or it produces a, a dead cat bounce, which could last maybe a day or two, maybe three, right? So that's, that's really why I'm not expecting another sell-off on Monday. Even though the situation with the futures is looking like, oh, things are bad, it's going to open lower. Yes, it is. But let's just see how things behave. So that's, that's the second stock that you should be keeping on your watch list. Now, the third stock. Now, two stocks for dip buyers, right? Therefore, the last one has to be for shorts. And it looks like a potential shorting opportunity. And that one is EN. VX. All right. Now with ENVX, this one is an $18 stock. As y'all can see right now with the chart, this is the daily. We are still on the daily. Um, it had a massive move from $8, right? It tripled in value in a matter of one month, right? And then at these levels, it's showing a triple top, a head and shoulders right here. And last two weeks, um, this, the movement from the last two weeks kind of like influenced the stock to go lower. And right now it's at a very critical level where um, like if you're shorting it, if, if anybody saw this and have been shorting it because of this formation, at this level, at this neckline, you want to take some money off the table, some, not all of it, right? Because it could always, it could always open up lower at 17 and continue down, right? It can always open up lower at 17 and have a violent sell off like that. But it could also have another variation where it pretty much wastes time and then falls. Like if you don't know what I'm talking about by wasting time, I talked about another stock which looked like this. It looked exactly like it. So this is a perfect segue into an update. All right, watch this one. And now look at, now look at Mara. I told y'all to watch Mara for a drop, right? And ENVX is at a similar level that at the time I told y'all to watch Mara, right? I made that video about Mara, I think it was on that weekend, last Sunday. It was right here at that neckline where I told you that this thing could drop all the way down to 900, well, to $9.50. It took a sweet time, very annoying price section, right? For four days straight, nobody made any money on 
tomorrow. Until Friday. So you see how annoying this thing can be? The head and shoulders is very, very clean. Yes, right? The direction, we know where it should go. But how is it going to get there? That's the most frustrating part. So um, with this one, it behaved, right? So with, and also with the way the market is looking, we, there may be some time wasted, some sideways action, maybe a little dead cat bounce that's, um, that, that wouldn't be so spectacular, right? And we could see NBX behave exactly like Mora and just chill at the neckline and not produce the sell off that should happen right eventually eventually it's going to go down to 16 like the majority i know this a lot of y'all again if you've been following if you've been watching the channel if you've been learning like y'all know this this thing should be falling all the way down to 15 but when the timing right the entry that is the that's that's the most annoying frustrating and difficult part and it also makes trading interesting so um, watch this one. This is the third attack that y'all should be keeping on your watches. Again, that was, I guess, the update of Mara. Another stock that I want to do an update on is, is PDD, right? I told y'all to watch PDD for a short. This one also was a little bit slower, right? I told y'all to watch it for a short at 65. And then on Friday, it finally had that drop to 60. Um, it's, they didn't quite dro it didn't drop to 55. At least not on time. I told you that they could do it by Friday. I was wrong about that, but I was right about the direction. It's probably going to go that just go sideways, and then eventually it's gonna drop later. I don't know when. Maybe Wednesday, maybe Thursday, maybe Friday of next week, right? But eventually it's going to get there. So I am still big picture. I'm still bearish, but for tomorrow, for tomorrow, I think. It's just going to stay at around the same price. And then later on, the sell-off could continue. All right. Now, the last stock that I want to do an update on is FCX, which was one of the top two stocks for Thursday. For those of y'all who didn't watch that video, that video will be pinned somewhere in this video so you can go watch it. I told y'all this one would collapse, right? It needed a little bit of patience. Um, I was off by 24 hours. I was 24 hours too soon, I guess. Um, we had this sell-off right here, and I told y'all, it would break down eventually as soon as it cracks below 28. And the contracts went up nicely, so congrats to anybody who was able to make some money on this one, along with the other stocks that I've been mentioning throughout the last week, right? So that is my very honest thoughts on all of these stocks, and that is the end of the video. Again, do not forget to annihilate the like button for you YouTube algorithm as always helps the channel a lot it allows more people to get this knowledge as well also if you are new to the channel and you haven't done so already definitely click on subscribe and click on the notification bell along with all notifications that way you don't miss out on future uploads if you'd like to be part of a private discord community where you can get all of this information in real time as I see them you can find that as the first link in the description of the video below if you haven't added me on social media yet, you can find me at Paul and Guma. And I've got a knowledge lab on Instagram and on Twitter. And lastly, if all of this is brand new to you, if you're interested in getting started in the stock market, there are some basic step-by-step -step directions in the description of the video below. Step one to step three. It only takes about 10 to 15 minutes for you to have all the tools you need to start trading immediately. You can also get some free stocks by setting up with Weibo using the third link in the description of the video below. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Guma. We open Analogy Lab, where we trade patterns and patterns only. And I will see all of you in the next video.